Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the terrific pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you, Matt? I am good. You ready for a trip to Gulfstream Park to talk Pegasus, Brian? Absolutely, Matt. It's a, it's a rich day of racing at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. It's Pegasus World Cup Day. It's not the money that it used to be, but we figured it wouldn't last at those crazy numbers they had a few years ago still a three million dollar raise better better yet matt it's part of a seven uh stakes race card at gulfstream park so there's lots of good racing at gulfstream park besides the pegasus world cup but of course we're going to start with the big one three million dollars nine furlongs the grade one race has attracted a field of nine matt but uh you know i i think a lot of these are gate fillers and uh, this race is pretty darn top heavy. Uh, I mean, it always looked like that was going to be the case, Brian, from uh, from right when the Breeders' Cup was finished. Uh, it, 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 it didn't seem like it was going to matter who was going to be in the field. And I think Gulfstream Park went through several machinations to try and find seven other horses to get in the gate. And so I agree uh, with your assessment here. It, it's the big matchup of... Uh, what many people might think are the two best uh, older horses right now, Nick's go and life is good. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we could have seen flight line. We could have seen Mandaloon. We could have seen a few others, but it is what it is. We got two excellent horses, Matt, as you said, we have two horses who are coming off breeders cup wins. Uh, it's not the first time that this has happened in the Pegasus and it's uh, kind of a nice, uh, Nice thing that Pegasus has going where it is attracting horses who are doing well in the Breeders' Cup a couple months before. It's attracting horses uh, who are about to go to stud but can still run in, uh, run in this one race before they go up to their stallion duties. And it's a good spot for uh, top-notch three-year-olds uh, who are beginning their four-year-old year in one of the richest races in the country. And uh, th those last two comments fit both Nick's go and life is good. Matt, on the morning line, were you surprised to see Nick's go was the favorite over life is good? It's close, but he's the favorite. It is close. I think it will be close. I think you have to make Nick's go uh, uh, the favorite. He was just voted the, the best horse in the world uh, it, from 2021, uh, riding a a four race grade one winning streak, um, you know, continuing the pattern that you alluded to, Brian, about horses going to the Pegasus with a Breeders' Cup win. And actually four out of the five Pegasus winners uh, did win a Breeders' Cup race before, uh, right before the Pegasus. And that applies to, as you said, Nick's go and life is good but hey it's pletcher power and there's a lot of people that absolutely love life is good so we'll see about the odds when the gates open yeah i i agree with everything you said i, I think nick's ghost should be the favorite he deserves to be the favorite he's the defending champion of this race his race at gulfstream park a year ago was very very good I don't think there were any life is goods in that field of course and nick's go had things a little bit more his own way uh, but he's the defending champ. He's the horse who will be voted horse of the year uh, uh, very soon here. So Nick's go de deserving. His last race, I think, was um, kind of a uh, capper on his career, a capper on his career before his final race here, uh, when he beats uh, those really good three-year-olds, Medina Spirit, Essential Quality, Hot Rod Charlie, decisively, uh, convincingly in, in the Breeders' Cup Classic, the 10 furlong Breeders' Cup Classic. Now he cuts back to nine furlongs. I don't think that's a problem for the speedy, speedy son of painter. He's six years old now, Matt. We've been talking about Nick's go for a long time. Uh, Life is go is a much more lightly raced four-year-old. But uh, I think I think the conversation starts, besides how good they are, is both have a ton of speed and you don't really see either of these horses passing horses in their career. So. As they say, the fur will fly early in this Pegasus World Cup, and, and maybe the race is decided in the first quarter mile. I don't know. We'll see, Brian. You know, typically uh, uh, the, the, the handicapping sh scenario should be, hey, look at these two. Speed. They always run. That, that's the way they run. That's not going to change. They're going to they're gonna go at it in the Pegasus World Cup. And, and usually I would agree that. I would be certain 
searching for a closer in here, but but this is not this is just not speed, Brian. This is quality quality speed and, and it's hard to imagine a scenario at least for me where both of these horses is are going to back up down the stretch oh i agree with you i i, I would be shocked if the winner of the pegasus world cup yes i would be shocked if the winner of the pegasus world cup is anybody but nick skull or life is good let's face it i mean these two stand out. I, that's that's why I was a little disappointed that the other seven horses in the field, uh, we didn't draw a little bit more. There's some there's some decent horses in there. Yeah. But uh, like I mentioned, there are there are a lot of good horses that could have been here and, and aren't for whatever reason. So it comes down to two. They're both speed horses, Matt. Um, I, I think it's I think it's, you know, a virtual match race. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, usually match races are won by who gets to the front, but I, I'm really not sure. Nick's go drew the rail. Joel Rosario will uh, no doubt push Nick's go right out of the gates. Uh, Nick's go has proven so good when he's on the lead in races like the, the Whitney last year's Pegasus. And of course the British cup classic that I mentioned, but life is good. is just a, a really, really fast and talented horse who's proven himself especially at distances of a mile or less, but he's proven at nine furlongs as well. Look what he did early, early on in his career, Matt, against Medina Spirit. We know how good Medina Spirit became. Uh, life is good as a talented horse with a ton of speed. He's run in shorter races than Nick's go, including, of course, the uh, one mile Breeders' Cup dirt mile. So life is good. Certainly seems like he has the ability to take the race from the outside. He's in the four hole with uh, Rad Ortiz Jr. Seems like he has the ability to take the race right to Nick's go early. And to tell you the truth, I, I don't think either horse has a chance, uh, uh, has really the opportunity to kind of lay back. Uh, I think if all things go well at the gate, both of them want to go, right? They don't want to leave the other one alone. I can't see uh, anything else happening uh, in the race, Brian. And then, as you said, it's a match race. And and, and what's the strategy going to be? Are those jockeys going to go hard all the way around? Or are they both going to say, let's get out there and, and settle a little bit and then let them run down the stretch? It's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, it will be interesting to see. And 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 Nick's go, uh, you know, if we see something crazy like uh, 44 4, 45 flat, uh, with life is good, head and head, uh, who knows? They could both be getting a little leg weary, or at least one will be getting more leg weary than the other as we finish up. As I said, though, I just don't know who else is going to come and get them. They're, they're so far ahead of this field. Let's talk about life is good a little bit, Matt. We probably still haven't seen the best yet of this four year old. Uh, a son of into mischief. Now he certainly he beat in his last two starts, the Kelso for sure at Belmont Park and then the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He did not beat the kind of horses that Nick's go beat, uh, especially in that Breeders' Cup Classic. But life is good, just really gives every indication in every single race he's run of, 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 of still having more in the tank and, and maybe the best is yet to come. I, for that reason, I kind of like life is good a little bit here because I think he's on his way up still in his career while Nick's go, this is the big one was the Breeders' Cup Classic. And now this is the, the, the final race of his career. He's, he's, uh, he's six years old now. Maybe, does life is good have a potential uh, advantage there being the, uh, will youth be served in, in this Pegasus World Cup? We will see, and I certainly agree that life is good, should be labeled the horse on the way up. He's done great, he did great things last year and sure seems like uh, we'll see even better things, but he's going to have to show better things in this race to beat Nick's go in my, uh, in my view. And, and also we need to keep in mind, yeah, that Breeders' Cup Classic for Nick's go was a great performance, uh, not necessarily the easiest uh, uh uh, race but he is is training great guns uh at the fairgrounds for this final start um so I, I don't think there's any reason that we shouldn't expect nick's go at his best yeah yeah it's not likely that nick's go is going to regress and this is a track where he performed well of course in this race last year so the stage is set really for uh, for a great race nick's go is going to be horse of the year for 2021 
life is good is the only loss in his career. He's, he's just won races as easy as could be. His only loss was a really good performance in the Jerkins Memorial where he was coming off a long layoff and was just edged by that top sprinter, Jockey's Warrior. Uh, it's an exciting uh, duel between the two. And you're right, if, if in, in normal circumstances, when you have two horses who really want the lead in here, I do look for come from behinders. Uh, but like I said a few times, I guess already, I, I just don't know who that's going to be in this field. Maybe the most, uh, uh, the horse with the most credentials coming in to this Pegasus after the top two is Sir Winston, Matt. And we'd have to look back to uh, 2019 to, to find his big win. But it was a very big win. Sir Winston, of course, is the Belmont Stakes winner of, uh, I guess, a little bit over two and a half years ago. Yeah, and a winner of a grade three race um, at Woodbine in his most recent start. Um, I feel about Sir Winston and, and some of the other potential closers that uh, the scenario in this race, uh, it, even though it should be in their favor, this is the kind of situation where I think they the, the connections of these closers have to be concerned about getting too far behind in this race with the speed of Nick's go and life is good. And, and when closers like that are asked to stay closer than they usually do, they're asked, they get used a little bit early on. It usually is something that backfires. These are one run horses who uh, make that big run coming down the stretch. So like, yeah, I, I what I'm doing is agreeing with you, Brian, uh, uh, there, there's a few decent closers in here, but, but I don't, I, I just don't see them being able to make up the ground. And if they stay closer, that's going to work against them. Sir Winston has done his best running. Uh, I think a uh, uh, mile and a half races. I think this race is going to be too short for him and too fast for him. Yeah. Too short, too fast. I can't disagree that that grade three you were talking about up in Woodbine was a long race as well. The, the, the one thing about Sir Winston after kind of a nondescript four-year-old year was last year he, uh, he, he started to put things together. His form uh, in the fall at Woodbine was very good. And I, and I think that makes him probably a, a legitimate third choice in here. And he's a horse, like you said, who's got very little speed. I wouldn't want him trying to lay close in any in any way here early and, and, and maybe third is good enough for every other horse in the race, not named Nick's go and life is good. It's a $3 million race. Maybe uh, their connections are, 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 are running for third and, and who knows what happens. Um, if, if Nick's go and life is good to go head and head and 45 flat, maybe it gives one horse uh, who runs a big race, the chance to kind of uh, at least get in the picture in the stretch, but I don't know. Uh, Chess chief is actually the, the uh, third choice on the morning line. Uh, last week, I gave out the stats that Chess Chief is five of 10 at fairgrounds, zero for 20 every other track that he's run at. I don't think Gulfstream Park is going to be a track that Chess Chief particularly likes. So, of those two late runners, I certainly like Sir Winston better. Stiletto Boy, Matt, and Endorsed are two horses, I think, who have a little bit of tactical speed. Endorsed coming off a good sprint performance, Gulfstream Park, Stiletto Boy coming off uh, the uh, grade one Malibu at seven furlongs. Maybe those two are the two that could uh, sit five, six lengths behind the speed duel and, and, and make a little bit noise uh, as they turn for home. Yeah, Endorsed has been sprinting uh, recently, but if you go back, you know, uh, farther in his past performances, you can find uh, 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 more distance races. Um, and Stiletto Boy, you know, has flashed some good performances. I think most notably uh, that second in the awesome again uh, behind Medina Spirit. But um, yeah, I, I just think th those two are uh, a notch below uh, the closers, Chess Chief and uh, Sir Winston. Yeah, I, I don't quite agree with you with the notch below, especially chess chief. Um, Stiletto Boy and Endorse, though, might fall into the trap that you talked about before of being a little bit too close to the amazing speed of the top two. So for that reason, it's it's hard to get too excited about their chances. But, you know, every once in a while, you see that speed duel and weird things happen. Stiletto Boy and Endorse would be the two horses I think have the early shot Title ready's in here. He hasn't done much lately. Uh, there's a few other cheaper horses, frankly, in the race as well. Um, 
Sir Winston, it, it seems like it's set up for maybe Sir Winston to, to, to come rally up for third, but it really does. Everything that Matt and I have been saying, it, it's, it's a great two horse race in this nine horse field of the Pegasus World Cup. Nick's go, life is good. Two of America's best. Nick's go going out, his swan song, life is good, hoping to start maybe a horse of the year type of uh, season himself, much like Nick Sko did last year with a Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile win back in 2019 and then a Pegasus World Cup to start his year uh, last year. Matt, it's time to make a pick. I, I'm kind of betwixt and between the top two, but I'm going to pick one of the top two, but I'm going to let you go first. Yeah, I feel the same way, and and I'll give my pick now, and it, it it's going to sound that way. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to be rooting for Life is Good, to uh, win the Pegasus because I want to see him on his way to doing some great things this year for Todd Pletcher. But my pick is going to be Nick's good. He has just been, sorry, Nick's go because he has just been so good this year. Nick's go is good. I, I'm going to say life is good. I'm going to say life is good. I, I, I just like the youth factor. I think maybe he's uh, revved up. You, you mentioned Nick Sko doing well in training. Certainly life is good, is doing better than ever, and he's more mature than ever. I'm going to give the slightest of nods to life is good. I'm hoping that there is a little bit of odds difference between the two, but probably the morning line the maker has it right, where people are going to respect life is good a whole lot, and it'll be pretty close between the top two for favoritism. I'm going to give the edge to life is good. I, I kind of like him being outside of Nick Sko, but Nick's go is so darn tough on the lead. So, yeah, I, my, my pick is 51, life is good, 49, Nick's go, pretty much zero for the other seven horses in the Pegasus World Cup. All right, Matt, like I said, there are six other stakes races at Gulfstream Park on Saturday, so it'll be a fun day. We're going to focus on the other two Pegasus races. They're both on turf, which Matt and I always like to handicap. Let's start with the Pegasus World Cup turf. This race has been around for a few years. It was a mile three sixteenths. I'm not sure why, but they shortened this grade one race to nine furlongs, Matt. You were talking about Todd Pletcher a lot already. It looks like he's got the two clear-cut favorites in the Pegasus World Cup turf. Yeah, and on the morning line, they're the top two choices in with Colonel Liam and uh, never surprised. He was he finished one, two in this race last year also with Colonel Liam winning. So Colonel Liam's coming back. Um, Coming back from a June layoff, we remember that uh, as part of uh, a Earl, his campaign last year, he had four wins in a row, two of them at Gulfstream, including uh, the Pegasus World Cup that included that dead heat with domestic spending. Um, and he's had time off since then, but nobody's better at bringing them back uh, off a layoff uh, than Todd Pletcher is. Yeah, Todd Pletcher is certainly good at bringing them back off a layoff. So is Chad Brown, two of the best at doing that. I think Colonel Liam, well, I'll just say it. I, actually, I don't think Colonel Liam is going to be the favorite. He'll be close. Uh, I, I would think that the morning line might get reversed between the top two. I just think never surprised Pletcher's other horses. Recent form is so good that I think he's going to actually be the favorite in here, but it should be pretty close between the two Pletchers. Colonel Liam, I think, is the class of the race. Uh, this is a horse who first half of last year was becoming an awesome turf horse, the son of Liam's map. Super impressed with the race he ran last year where he was stuck down on the rail for a lot of the race and he just effortlessly swung outside and, and mowed him down in the stretch. So Colonel Liam um, is the best horse in the race. I'm pretty sure of, of saying that even as good as never surprised his look recently. But the problem with Colonel Liam is he's, he's been away for seven plus months. Uh, much like his sire, Liam's map, who was, of course, a dirt horse, uh, and, and his sire, for that mat matter, uh, Unbridled Song, I, I think there are some soundness issues there, but uh, all of them, whether you're talking about Unbridled Song or Liam's map or Colonel Liam, are just super talented horses, and I'm convinced that Colonel Liam is a real talent, and, and he could be a turf champion if he sticks around for the whole year. So with what you said about Todd Fletcher, I, I got to like Colonel, Colonel Liam's chances at a track where he's done well before, including the Tropical Park Derby. And that race was off the layoff. So there's a lot of reason for me to think that Colonel Liam is the horse to beat here. But never surprise, Matt, a lot of speed, still pretty lightly raced, a four-year-old for Todd Fletcher. He's looked really good, especially in those last two races. 
yeah, the Tropical Park Derby, the Gio Ponte at Aqueduct, uh, certainly coming into his own seven career starts, four wins, three seconds. So never run a bad race, got good speed, got tactical speed, uh, whether he's on the lead or pressing. It looks like there's some other speed in this race, at least certainly from the uh, uh, veteran channel cat. Yeah, yeah. Channel Cat often shows speed a little longer. I'm not sure if he has this nine furlong never yeah. surprised kind of speed, but uh, never surprised. Yeah, he's a danger if if they let him alone at all on the lead. Uh, Son of Constitution looks like a serious turf horse for Todd Fletcher, and he's the horse I actually think will end up the favorite. Let's talk about some of the others, Matt. Chad Brown, big turf race, Chad Brown, million dollar turf race. You got to talk Chad Brown. Looks like Sacred Life will be the third choice. He is on the morning line. Sacred Life has been knocking heads late, uh, lately with field pass, but Sacred Life is a horse who's been around. He's seven years old now, uh, and, and he's coming off a couple good performances in the Knickerbocker in New York, and then the Sea Biscuit out west. He's a horse who can rally, which uh, might not be a bad thing in the nine furlong trip in the Pegasus World Cup turf. Yeah, that's for sure. Second in that Sea that Sea Biscuit out at Del Mar first in the Knickerbocker that you mentioned, which is a grade three um, at Belmont Park. It's Chad Brown, knows how to get them ready for the big race. But yeah, seven year old. Seven year old, yeah. It, 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 you gotta wonder if he'll still be at his best, but he's been running well recently. And I think he'll get that as the Chad Brown horse. I think he'll be a clear third choice. I think he'll be closer to the two Fletcher horses than maybe the, maybe the fourth choice even. So. Sacred Life, uh, if somebody comes running late, Sacred Life is, a, is one of the uh, most likely candidates to do that. I think you got to talk about the horse, though, that he's been running against, Field Pass, because they've been ba basically uh, inseparable in the last two, both in New York uh, and out in California in that seed biscuit. Field Pass is a horse I think will probably have, once again, quite a bit better odds than Sacred Life. He did when he beat him in the seed biscuit last time, and I think he will again. He's closing in on, on, on a million dollars in earnings. This has been a nice turf horse for uh, Mike Maker. He's won on synthetic surfaces as well, uh, stakes. He's won a lot of stakes. So I think if you're just looking for some value, Field Pass might be the one, uh, especially when you consider Sacred Life will probably be more in the five to one range and Field Pass in the 10 to one range. Yeah. Hey, and if you like Mike Maker, he's got four, Brian in this field and Mike Maker, Hey, he knows how to get his horses ready for, uh, for big races. And yeah, I think that's a great point. Uh, he's it's pretty hard to separate field pass, um, from, uh, sacred life. And I think there'll be a significant difference in odds. Yeah. And probably a pretty significant, uh, a placing where they are early field pass has more tactical speed. So if he can get the trip, an interesting longer shot here in the Pegasus World Cup tour. Hit the road might be the fourth choice, Matt, because he's got very good form, mostly out in California uh, for trainer Dan Blacker. This is a horse who looks like he's run well enough to win more than he has recently, but he's won his share too. But if you look at it, it, it really is, a, a, it looks like a mile specialist now stretching out, coming across country nine furlongs and stretching out to the, to the, the, the one extra furlong of the Pegasus. Yeah, and like you see, uh, were alluding to, he's coming east for the first time, and that's always a big uh, question mark. Um, but you mentioned uh, uh, wins at at one point in his uh, career. He won four races in a row. He won the Kilroe Mile. But yeah, Brian uh, um, got some talent, but you know it's tough when you gotta go all the way across the country uh, and face it, uh, a big field like this. Um, that's a pretty good field. It is. It's a, it's a pretty deep field. Hit the road. Yeah, I'm going to lay off him a little bit. If this was at California, it'd probably be a different uh, thing. But uh, stretching out an extra furlong could matter. And that race he went when he did come um, somewhat east for, to Keeneland last year wasn't quite as good as his California races. So I'm going to lay off, hit the road here. Anybody else you have that you really want to talk about in this Pegasus turf, Matt? Um, I, just, I want to mention Doswell, uh, Brian, who is another one that's going to come with odds. Um, Doswell has been a talented horse that has been very difficult to handle. 
and get to train. Um, he had a he had a stint in the Chad Brown barn and also the Bill Mott barn, and, and they just couldn't tap into him. So the owners said, "Hey, we're going to go with a wily veteran," and they sent him to the barn of of Barkley Tag, who seems to be the guy who finally, uh, along with his uh, talented assistant Robin Smullen, uh, has been able to tap into that talent of Doswell, gotten him to settle down a little bit and behave a little bit better and got, had a really nice win in the Fort Lauderdale, which was a prep for this race. Am I saying that he's going to win this race? No, not necessarily, but I think he's a pretty cool story and, and might be a threat. I can't disagree with you. Dotswell's an interesting horse who uh, who's shown flashes. This last race was very good, as she said. I'm a fan of Barkley Tag as well, and it looks like he's got this horse moving in the right direction. I'm not really sure what Doswell does early in the race. Uh, he kind of goes back and forth a little bit between speed yeah. and not so much speed. So that's a question for me. But uh, yeah, an interesting horse. I, I think he's one of the ones that'll get some money uh, coming off that last one. And, and maybe Barkley Tag has him going well enough where he can make him a, a real impact on this field. He's done well at Gulfstream Park, as you mentioned. Matt, who's your top pick in this Pegasus World Cup turf? Well, Brian, I think if, if the prospect of getting three to one odds or so on Colonel Liam, I'm going with uh, the defending champion from this race. I'm with you, Matt. Yeah, Colonel Liam, uh, despite the layoff, I think, I think he's proven he runs well fresh. He's proven he's run well at Gulfstream Park. I said before, he's the class of the race. Uh, never surprised is the horse I think he has to be. Field pass would be my top uh, horse with odds, but I, I just think Colonel Liam is a, a really, really nice turf horse who's just a little bit better than the rest. And I'm hoping the other pledger's the favorite, so we'll see. All right, Matt, one more race we wanna jump into. That's the Philly and Mare Turf. This is a new race. This is a mile on 16th. They're again, a, a real good purse, half a million dollars for this first edition of the Philly and Merit Turf of the Pegasus. And uh, it looks like Mr. Chad Brown, again, uh, has a clear favorite. And, and if you look at the morning line, Regal Glory was made a pretty clear favorite coming in from a win out in California. Yeah, field of 11. I, I, it's, an interesting, uh, it's an interesting field because there are several horses, three, four, five horses that if you look at their career records have very impressive stats, winning a lot of uh, finding their way to the winner's circle often. Yeah, and Regal Glory is one of them. She's found her way to the winner's circle a lot. This is, this is a little different uh, a Chad Brown type in that she really hasn't been a grade one for forever. Uh, she's, she's run kind of uh, behind some of those other top Chad Brown mares he's had in the barn, uh, but she's continued to run good races. She's uh, uh, continued to do well in her last, her last two. And, and certainly the last one, the matriarch uh, was her best yet when uh, she, uh, she rolled out there in California. Now make the matriarch, um, is often a race that I think of as a, as a huge Philly Mare turf race, but maybe that field was a little weaker uh, than most uh, matriarchs that we're used to. So I'm actually going to take a shot to beat her, but I do recognize Regal Glory as the, as the horse to beat. Um, looking at the morning line, it looks like they're looking at some horses coming out of the Suwannee River. I like to say the name of that race, the yeah. Suwannee River, especially if you're a Honeymooners fan, Suwannee River. Anyway, uh, Sweet Melania, Sweet Melania got the win, and, and she was a filly that we were looking on early on in her career. This was kind of a nice return to her best form when she uh, ran down Shifty She in the Suwannee River. Yeah, and that Suwannee River at Gulfstream Park was the was the prep race for this uh, Pegasus filly and mare turf. We got the top three from that race coming back uh, in uh, Sweet Melania, who was the winner. Um, and uh, you mentioned Shifty, Shifty She, a little bit of a, a, a tongue twister there, was second, um, was second in the race and uh, in a hurry was third in the Suwannee River. Yeah, in, in a hurry was not far behind the top two. Shifty She is uh, a speed mare who, who looks better than ever. And Sweet Melania, maybe she's getting back to 
where we thought she might be early on in her career, because that was a very nice win in the Suwannee River. All three you have to give a shot in here. Nicest, Matt, is an interesting one too. She, she's an Irish bred filly who actually ran third, not, not a real close third, but third in the Irish Oaks last year. She seems to be getting a little bit better with each start uh, in America. She's run her last couple out in California. Yeah, and uh, you those three races that you mentioned, that's a second in the American Oaks at Santa Anita, a third in a grade three uh, at Del Mar, and a fourth in the Queen Elizabeth II at uh, Keeneland. So hasn't won yet in the States, but but those were three, uh, three respectable efforts. Three respectable efforts. I, I wonder about her if this is a little short for her, but uh, she's a talent. She's a bit of a wild card in here. And if they run fast early, which they could, uh, nicest is a dangerous horse. Matt, Lady Spatespear, uh, a talented uh, an invader from Canada. Uh, she has a lot of speed, too. She might be the one that takes the race to Shifty She early. Uh, there's some other good horses in here, Matt. And I don't think we've gotten to either of the horses that we're going to pick. So I'll let you go first. Uh, who, do you, who do you like best that we haven't even mentioned yet in this Pegasus Philly and Mare Terror? Yeah, well, I'll get that, get that, get that, get to that in a second. But interesting, you mentioned Lady Spitespear, who was the winner of the first four races in her career, um, and then finished third in the Tropical Park Oaks. There's another horse in the field that won the first four races in her career uh, in in Alms. So uh, we talked about interesting records on these horses. Uh, those are a couple also. But I still haven't mentioned my my top pick. I will do that now. You have talked about a number of horses that have got early speed. Some of those are uh, important contenders in this race. I'm going to go for a bit of a price in here. I'm going to go with Summer in Saratoga for Joe Sharp, who has seven wins in her career first in a stakes race at fairgrounds recently first in the dowager a grade three at keeneland not uh long before that gonna come running late i like the odds yeah i think that's a good pick matt this is a philly who or this is a mayor who likes to win if you look at her record especially especially recently summer in saratoga is a nice horse this this might be her toughest test in a while but on the other hand i, I you know this is grade three race and it's uh first running. And I, I think it is kind of more of a grade two kind of race. It's not a true grade one in my eyes. And Summer in Saratoga for trainer Joe Sharp certainly has a shot. There's a filly in here though that I like better than anyone we've mentioned. Her name is Gift List. Gift List is an English bred and she was pretty good running in England um, before she came over. I was just super impressed with her first three races in America. The problem was that came a while ago in the spring. Uh, of last year, but uh, super impressed because she got no pace. She got no pace at Keeneland. Uh, then she went to Churchill and just dominated a graded stakes at Churchill Downs before going to New York. And again, she just found no pace in that wonder again. Absolutely no pace. This time, I think she gets pace. So kind of the same reason with Summer in Saratoga. I think Gift List is going to love this pace. That makes me on two horses who haven't run in a long time in these two turf races. Colonel Liam, I think, is the class of that race, but I think Gipless could be really, really good. And she's 15 to 1 on the morning line. So for trainer Brian Lynch, Matt, she's going to be my top choice in this race. Hey, I can't blame you for going for a big price. We're both going for a price uh, in this field, a field of 11. So, uh, you know, part of this exciting day at Gulfstream. Yeah, it's a nice day. I hope you, I hope you fans all uh, uh, hunker in for uh, all those stakes races, seven of them at Gulfstream Park, led by the showdown of Nick's Go and Life is Good. Folks, I want to remind you, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Turn on those notifications so you'll never miss another big episode of Horse Center. Matt, before we go, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Absolutely. As I said, good luck with the Pegasus. There is also a uh, Kentucky Derby prep. The Southwest is going on Saturday, $750,000 purse that's, a, that's attracted a field of 12. So uh, you're going to have to squeeze that in. I think, I think it's going to come after uh, the, the, the Pegasus races uh, in terms of uh, timing. So 
more for a great day of racing. And of course, I want to thank everybody for watching and thank our producer, Ben Wilkie, for putting together the show. Well done, Matt. Thanks to everybody for watching every week. We sure do appreciate it. Thanks to Ben. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. And of course, thanks to our sponsor, the best content site out there. That's Derby Wars. Folks, we will be back with another big show on Horse Center next week. But uh, as Matt mentioned, the Southwest and of course, this big card at Gulfstream Park. It should be a fun Saturday of racing. Enjoy. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.